Welcome to Olive Branch Baptist Church. We're so happy that you are with us this morning. Uh, we are happy to be home. We had a, I guess, eventful vacation of where uh, we all went down to Florida on Friday, apparently having the flu, which if you have ever traveled with kids who have the flu, just don't. Apparently it was a bad idea on my part to say, hey, it was a great idea if we all decide to get in a car and drive seven hours uh, with sick kids and a sick wife. Bad idea. Wouldn't do it again. Had fun, though. We were the most miserable-looking people at Universal Studios you've ever seen. So that's why there weren't any pictures this week. But we were all, I think, feeling better, and we are happy to be home and be back in our nice new sanctuary. So if you are a guest, we are happy that you are with us this morning. Uh, please let us know you're here by filling out a Connect card uh, to get to know us a little bit better. Or you can also scan uh, the back of the bulletin that you picked up. Uh, that will take you to the mobile version of the very same uh, Connect card. And don't forget, if you are a guest, to grab a gift bag on the way out this morning from a deacon or an usher or from a pastor. A uh, whole lot of information about the church in there as well. Uh, speaking of info about the church, we have a very, very, very limited number of printed church directories uh, in the fellowship hall, or, uh, in the welcome center. Uh, so here's what I said in the first service, and I'll pass along to the second service. If you have access already to the church directory online, uh, the printed ones, I'm sorry, they're probably not for you if you have access. Uh, these are those who uh, have even worse internet than we do or are technologically challenged. Uh, those are for them, so if you are one of those people, if I just described you, feel free to grab one. Uh, if not, or if you need even help to get onto the Instant Church directory, uh, call the church office, we will help you out with that. Um, don't forget, next uh, weekend, the schedule for Sunday is a little bit different. Uh, there will be no 9 o'clock service, which you're here at 11, it doesn't matter to you anyway. Uh, but we will still be having Sunday school at 10, and we will be having uh, Reverend John Alford here at 11. And then we will have our revival uh, in the evening as well. So help us get the word out about that. There's information in your bulletin. Uh, don't forget about Trunk or Treat. We still need about 18 to 20 cars, which we can do it with 10. It's going to be kind of bad, but we can do it with 10. So if you are able to help out with that anyway, if you're able to... Uh, bring a trunk, or if you're able to bring some treats, or help out with activities, uh, please let me know. There's a sign-up sheet in the Welcome Center, uh, so please help us get to that goal as well. And then finally, from November 5th to March 24th on Sunday nights here at Olive Branch, there will be a family Bible study uh, that is being done by Light the Night Ministries and Bill Callahan, who's the director for Camp Kerr Lake. Um, if you are interested in that, uh, Light the Night, they just ask that you would register uh, so they can have an idea of how much food to prepare. Uh, there's also going to be child care available through fifth grade uh, if you are needed or if that is needed. So uh, make sure you check out your bulletin. Make sure you check out Facebook, the app, uh, to figure out all these other things that we've got going on. We've got a busy few months coming up, and so uh, make sure you check that out. We're going to have our chairman of deacons, Paul Bailey, come on up because he has an announcement as well. Test. Well, if you didn't know, uh, this is Pastor Appreciation Month. So, if you will, just take the opportunity to let these two know how much you love and appreciate them, uh, love on them, and, and just don't limit it to just this month. Okay, let's make it all the way through the year. Okay, um, <laughs> let's just uh, show them our appreciation on an ongoing basis. Um, so I have the distinct privilege of offering you these checks. There's a 50-50 chance you're getting the right check. Um, <laughs> that's just a token of our, of our appreciation for all that you do here uh, for us and for his kingdom. Um, we um, just recognize all your, your hard work and dedication to the ministry. Uh, we want to express our love and our gratitude uh, to you both and just pray that God will continue to bless what you do here at Old Branch Baptist Church.
Thank you, children, for helping us sing the song. Our God is big, He is mighty, and He is here with us. And you are here together with brothers and sisters in the Lord. So welcome them this morning to Olive Branch with a handshake or a hug or a how howdy. I wanted to read this morning Psalm 90. It's the song of Moses. And much and just like the song we just sang, it reflects the same truth. That life is hard and it's difficult. At the same time, God is faithful and he can fill our life with peace and joy. Imagine Moses' life. He lived 120 years. And imagine all of the trouble and trial that he saw and he lived through. For 40 years, he lived and was in the palace of Pharaoh. For 40 years, he was tending sheep. For another 40 years, he was leading the people of Israel in the desert. And then the Lord took him home. But in all of that, he saw it all, yet he also knew the blessing of God. And so this morning, you may come uh, discouraged and feeling down and burdened by this life, but know that we can cast our burdens on the Lord, for he cares for us. And that even though this life is hard, we have a promise of a future with him, where we will live with him forever in a perfect place. So think of those thoughts as you hear Moses sing this song to us this morning. Lord, you have been our refuge in every generation. Before the mountains were born, before you gave birth to the earth and the world, from eternity to eternity, you are God. You return mankind to the dust, saying, Return, descendants of Adam. For in your sight, a thousand years are like yesterday that passes by, like a few hours of the night. You end their lives, they sleep. They are like grass that grows in the morning, in the morning it sprouts and grows. By evening it withers and dries up. For we are consumed by your anger, we are terrified by your wrath. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. For all of our days ebb away under your wrath. We end our years like a sigh. Our lives last 70 years, or if we're strong, 80 years. Even the best of them are struggle and sorrow. Indeed, they pass quickly and we fly away. Who understands the power of your anger? Your wrath matches the fear that is due you. Teach us to number our days carefully so that we may develop wisdom in our hearts. Lord, how long? Turn and have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your faithful love, so that we may shout with joy and be glad all our days. Make us rejoice for as many days as you have humbled us, for as many years as we have seen adversity. Let your work be seen by your servants and your splendor by their children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be on us. Establish us for the work of our hands. Establish the work of our hands. At this time... Michael Smith, one of our deacons, is going to pray for our service. Thank you, Michael. Good morning, Olive Branch. Good morning. Let us pray. Father God, we come to you this morning with so much in our hearts and on our minds, Lord. We see the scenes that we saw in Israel, Lord, and we lift our brothers and sisters in prayer to you, Lord. And we ask that you keep a hedge of protection over them. Lord, and we thank you for such a beautiful morning, Lord. We ask that this service be glorifying and uplifting to you and that lives will be changed. In Christ's name we all pray. Amen. Amen. You guys may stand again and we'll worship together.
So we, we've had a week. That week's gone. We're going to start a new week Amen. today. Mm-hmm. So last week had its challenges, as you, many of you know, and I thank you for praying for my husband who had a little cut cut last week, lost a, an organ um, mm-hmm. that he didn't need that was causing too much trouble. It's nice to know that God worked in some spare parts, isn't it? <laughs> so that when they act up, all we got to do is just yank them. If we know good people like Mike Tazi, <laughs> a little plug for Dr. Tazi. He was great to us this week. And then, you know, then the, the viral bug came rolling through the house, and we actually had to change a key to a song for this morning because Wanda couldn't get there. She was down here, mm-hmm. and I'm kind of still down there. But God is good, is he not? Yeah, is he not? Oh, he so is. Good. And the, the virus hit Sunday night after I did music here. Um, Sunday morning, and I said, I don't, God's going to do something between now and Sunday morning, y'all. I don't know what he's going to do. Um, it's not gone, but, you know, he's good. He's given me what I need because he's all we need. Um, this next song, we've done it before a couple of times, but I really want you to focus um, on the lyrics to the song, I Want to Know You. This is why we're here this morning, to, to, to read his word, to have it speak to us through our pastor. Um, contemplate what it is that he wants you to to work with this week and what he wants you to work through and how he wants to work through you in the lives of others Uh, but we have to to be um, tuned in to what he's doing okay here we go
went to the, the Water Buffalo Lodge. And remember the Grand Poobah was there at the Water Buffalo Lodge. And he was the one, I guess, who was in control of the lodge. I mean, they had meetings, they went on trips and everything like that. And even as a kid, I realized they were kind of making fun of the organizations that did exist in, in real life and not in Flintstone land. So, uh, you know, there's, there were groups. There were uh, the Moose or the Elk or you had service organizations like the Kiwanis or like the Lions Club. So there were different fraternal groups and service groups. And there was a time when uh, many people were part of them. Their membership was large, and they had a lot of people doing service and a lot of people joining these groups. But nowadays, when you go and you ask people, what are you a member of, about Sam's Club is about the only thing that people join anymore, or Costco, depending on where you live, or both. And so in our culture, there uh, are fewer and fewer people that join anything. You know, whether it is a service group, a fraternal group, whether it is uh, helping with Little League or helping with dance or helping in any way, any group, membership and all of them are down. And here, here's an example. Here is a Kiwanis group that has been in existence in Bellingham, Washington since 1922. And here is the group. And over the years, they have gotten smaller and older. And it is much like every service group, every fraternal group, and unfortunately, even churches. And today, just like people don't join the uh, Grand Poobah's Water Buffalo Lodge, fewer and fewer people actually join churches. And so we have been talking uh, to this last few weeks about wanting Olive Branch Baptist Church to grow to grow in numbers, to grow in our faith, to grow in our closeness to God, to grow in any and every way. And for that to happen, we've talked about how we have to use our gifts and we have to serve, how we need to invite people to church and to Jesus, how we have to give sacrificially and generously, and how we are to pray for God to move and for us to be close to Him. And today, I want to talk about joining about joining officially as a member of Olive Branch Baptist Church. Now, why would I talk about that? Because many would even ask the question, is church membership even biblical? So I want to stay, take a step back and make this clear that the scripture does tell us that being part of a church is biblical and is commanded by our God. Look at Hebrews chapter 10 where the writer says this, let us hold on to the confession of our hope without wavering, since he who promised is faithful. I, I want to stop right there with just that verse. We are to hold on to the faith that we have. We have made a confession of faith. We have said that we believe that Jesus is our Savior. And we have said that we believe that he died for our sin and that he rose again and that he is going to come back and take us to be with him forever. This confession that we've made gives us hope. And so we must hold on to that and never release it, never give, op, give up because God would never give up. Hold on to the confession of our hope without wavering. Since he who promised is faithful. Now notice what he goes on to say. And let us watch out for one another to provoke love and good works. You can't watch out for one another unless you are together so you can see each other. Okay? So here begins the command of what we are supposed to do. We are to be together as brothers and sisters in Christ. So that we can... Look out for one another. And notice what we're looking for. We're not looking to judge. We're not looking to point fingers. We are looking so that we can provoke love and good works. And how do you provoke love and good works? By you yourself showing love and doing good works. Uh, for whatever reason, usually in our English language, we use the word provoke in a negative way. We're provoking someone to anger. We're provoking someone uh, to do something bad. 
But I love the idea of provoking one another to do good works and to love. And so as we come together as we're commanded and we love and we do good works, that encourages others to do so. Just as though when you provoke someone to get angry, it gets more people angry. (laughs) But in the church, we love and we do good works. And notice this, that's what we're supposed to do. What we're not supposed to do is neglect meeting together. Not neglecting to gather together, some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging each other and all the more as you see the day approaching. For 2,000 years, people have been in the habit of not coming together. We see it all over today, but it's not new. It was happening back in the first century as well. You know, it can become a habit just to come and gather together. And when it's only a habit, it's not the best thing because we should come together to love one another and provoke good deeds but at least if you're coming out of habit it's a good habit but unfortunately the other side of it too is sometimes we get into the habit of not gathering and once we get into that habit it's very easy to stay in it and we don't gather together We're to provoke one another to love and good deeds and also encourage one another. And the writer says to do this especially as you see the day approaching. In other words, time is running out. Jesus is coming back. And because he's coming back, we even more so need to be together. Holding to our confession Spurring each other on to love and good works. Encouraging one another. That's why it's so important that we come together. And not stay isolated. If there is a Christian who thinks they can live the Christian life isolated. Or they think they're being a good Christian. Pleasing God by living a life apart from other Christians. They are dead wrong. We are not called to live in isolation or by ourselves. We must be together. And notice I haven't used the word coming together at Sunday morning at 11 o'clock or 9 o'clock if you came earlier. Because it's bigger than that. I know we often use these verses talking about people must be in church. Well, yes, but it's more than just being in a worship service. We gather together to worship each week on Resurrection Day. But we also gather to prayer. We gather to serve. We gather to study the Word of God. We must gather together for all these reasons because as we do, we love, encourage, build each other up. We help each other to not fall into temptation. We help each other to grow in our faith. We help each other. And therefore, it is clear from Scripture that we are commanded to be together in a church. Paul uses the illustration in 1 Corinthians 12. You know it well. I won't belabor it, but... Here he talks about that the church is a body. And because it's a body, there are different parts of the body. And so just as it sounds ridiculous to think that your ear would leave your body and go off in the corner of your house and stay there by itself, it's just as ridiculous that a Christian would go off by himself somewhere and not be part of of a larger body of Christ. It's unhealthy, it's unbiblical, it's wrong, disobedient. I don't know how many other ways I can say it. We must be together. And when the body is all together, and each part is doing what it's called to do, the body is healthy, it's wonderful, it's beautiful, and then it is able to do great and mighty things for God. So I have no question in my mind that we are called to be together in churches. But now someone could argue, well, yeah, that's one thing to be together as a church. I agree with that. But officially joining a church, now that's a different thing. And you're right, it is a different thing. But I want to show you from the Bible why I think that's also a thing that we are to do. I'll give you some examples from the New Testament. In the book of Acts, as the apostles were preaching, more people were being saved and they were numbering them. 
So if they were numbering them, I have a sense they were keeping a list of who was in the church. When widows needed to be cared for, there was a list. How do they know which widows were on the list to care for and which ones weren't? It must have been the ones who were officially part of their church. Uh, you know, Tim, uh, Paul didn't tell Timothy to take care of all the widows in the area, to take care of the widows in his church. And so they must have had a way to say, these widows are officially part of this church, and we will care for them. Now, the church chose seven men. How did they decide who got to choose? They must have had a, a, a list, or they had... A, People they knew, these people are in the church, so they get to decide. The same with making decisions about church discipline. How did the Corinthians make a decision? If they didn't have a way to decide who's in and who's out to make the decision. And the writer of Hebrews also says that people in the church are to obey their leaders. Well, if you are under someone's authority, you must be officially part of that group or you wouldn't be under the authority of the church leaders. So I believe these verses show us that in the first century church, they certainly gathered, there's no question about that. But beyond that, they had a way of saying these people are in the church, and so they get to be cared for, and they get to vote and decide on issues. And others who are with us don't, or aren't cared for in the same way, or don't get to decide because they're not officially part of the church. So I have people ask me, do I need to be a member of Olive Branch Baptist Church officially or another church? And the answer is yes and no. Do you need to be a member of the church to go to heaven? Well, no, of course not. There's only one way to heaven, that's faith in Jesus Christ. There's nothing added to that. Do you need to be a member of Olive Branch Baptist Church officially to be part of the church? Well, no. You can worship here. You can serve here. You'll be cared for here and prayed for here. You you are part of the family even though you're not officially have joined the church. So that answer, in a sense, is no. But the answer is also yes. Because there are benefits, privileges of being a member. And as I've just showed you, I think it's biblical that Christians should not only attend a church and be part of it, they should also be a member of it. So why become a member? When you become a member, it's a formal declaration of your commitment to a church. I think this is the reason why we see membership and everything down. Because people do realize if you join something, now you've obligated yourself to it. You're going to have a responsibility. And people say, I have enough obligations. I have enough responsibilities. So I'm not going to join a service group. I'm not going to join the, the, the Masons. I'm not going to join a church. I'm not going to join a board of the Little League. I'm not going to join any of that. Because if I do, I'm going to have more obligations. And, and that's one of the reasons I think we see membership down in everything. People don't want to be tied down to something, obligated to something. They want to be able to be free to do what they want, not what they want. And they want to be free to participate in things without being committed to something. But when you do formally join, you do make a commitment. And as you'll see, there are some responsibilities, but there are also some benefits as well. Now here at Olive Branch, if you attend this church, you will be loved, prayed for, and cared for. But I believe you'll be prayed for, loved for, and cared for better if you officially join the church. Because like the New Testament had its list of of widows we make a list of members and every person who is a member has a deacon who is assigned to them and the primary responsibility of that deacon is to pray and to care for the families they are assigned so if you are a church member you have a deacon who's praying for you caring for you also sort of a liaison between you and the leadership of the church you know the church is too big for me personally to spend the time I need to and want to with all of you to care for you and pray for you. Yes, I do, and especially when you have a need, but that's why we have deacons so that we can make sure everyone gets the attention and the care and the love that they need. It's too much for one person to do. 
So if you join the church, you will be assigned that deacon. Until you join the church, you're not assigned a deacon. And the only reason is it's hard to know who's committed and who's not. Uh, because some people attend for a while, some people attend for years and never become members. But it's, you know, how do we decide? Well, we'll you know, you've got so many months and then you get added to the list. It, it gets very complicated, confusing, so we make it simple. When someone joins, they're on the list, they're cared for by one of the deacons. Also, you become under the authority of church leadership, as we saw in the book of Hebrews. Christians should be under the authority of Christ, obviously, but then under the authority of church leaders, because church leaders have been given the responsibility of God to teach and to care and to lead Christians. And so Christians should be underneath leaders so that they can be led and taught and cared for. That's the organization, so to speak, that God has given us. So that when you join a church, then you are under that. And again, I think it's another reason why people don't want to join things, because they know this to be true. If you join the Water Buffalo Lodge, the Grand Poobah can tell you what to do, and people don't want to be told what to do, or don't want to be under leadership. But it is biblical, and that is why we should do it. You affirm the beliefs of the church when you join it. You become part of a group and say, yes, this is what I believe. And also then you make a commitment to the well-being of the church, to serve and to give and to support. And so again, I think another reason why people don't like to join things in general, because they have that understanding, this will be something I need to give my attention to. So it's true, I think, in our culture in general, that people like to participate in things without being committed to them, because they know commitment means obligation, being under the leadership of someone, and then I have to be responsible for its well-being. If I just participate in it, it's someone else's job. And if I just participate in it, the leader doesn't have, can't say anything to me. If I just participate, if it all blows up, that's somebody else's fault. That's not my fault. And if I just participate in it, I get benefits, but I don't have to give anything back. And so I think that's why in general, again, membership is down in everything. And maybe some reasons why people don't join churches. But let me tell you what you get if you do join and again give you some more information about why I think it's important. I just copied this from our bylaws. It says members are expected to be faithful to all the duties essential to the Christian life, to attend the services of this church, to give regularly for its support and its causes and to share in its organized work. That's a lot of words, isn't it? <laughs> but what it means is what I just kind of talked about. You, if you join the church, you then say that you are going to be responsible for its well-being by being here, by serving here, by uh, giving to its causes and sharing in its work. All members of the church have the responsibility and privilege to vote on the transactions of the church. And so when you're a member, you do get to decide. You get to decide who the pastors will be. You decide who the leaders are. You get to decide how the money is spent. You get to decide uh, major decisions that the church makes. You get to decide those when you are a member. When you're not a member, you can give input into those, but you don't get to decide those. That's for the members to decide. So that is a privilege of that. And there are certain places in the church that, for service that are limited to members. And so you get to serve in more places if you are a member as well. Well, at Olive Branch, what are the requirements? They're very simple. There's two, to be saved and to be baptized by immersion since being saved. And let me explain the second one. I hope I don't have to explain the first one too much. <laughs> being saved obviously means that you have put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. You believe that He died on the cross for you, rose again to life, and He has saved you. You're saved. The Bible says that we are to be baptized. There's no Christians that disagree with that. But Christians have disagreed about how to do it and when to do it. And so I do understand this. Some people don't join Olive Branch Baptist Church for the second reason. And I completely understand that. Sometimes they were baptized as an infant. They were christened. Or maybe they were baptized later in life. But they were baptized by, again, sprinkling or some other mode other than being immersed in water. 
and they feel like their baptism's legitimate, right? It almost sounds like if I say to someone, well, to join Olive Branch, you have to be baptized again because your first baptism wasn't good enough. That's what it almost sounds like. Yeah, you were baptized, but you got to do it again. I can understand how someone would say, well, wait a minute. Uh, that, that first one counted, and that first one was meaningful, and, and that first one is real. So why are you asking me to do it again? And if someone has that belief and that conviction, I understand it. And I can understand why that would be a hindrance to them joining Olive Branch. And I'd be okay with that because I understand where they're coming from. But let me explain why this is a requirement and maybe you can understand that better. Uh, this is uh, what I believe the, the biblical uh, principle. If you look in the New Testament, everyone who is baptized has been saved. And everyone who is baptized is old enough to know what they're doing. So if you're being baptized as an infant, that's not what is, happens in the New Testament. So for us who are uh, Baptists, that is our belief that we are baptizing as the New Testament shows us. Uh, believers, and also they are baptized by being immersed into water. For that's what the word baptize actually means. It means immersion. So in church history, I believe for the first few hundred years, that's how baptism was done. About 400 years later is when some of the modes of baptism changed. And that's when they did start <laughs> baptizing infants. And so for about another thousand years, that became the practice of the church of christening infants. So it was almost the same idea as the Old Testament and circumcision. So here is a child, a baby boy is born into the nation of Israel. He's circumcised on the eighth day to become part of the community. So the church started baptizing infants with the same idea. Here we are welcoming a child into our community. As you just heard me said, I don't think it's biblical. You don't read that at all in the New Testament. So if you know anything about the Reformation in around 1500, that is when Martin Luther and then others started looking at their Bibles more closely and they determined, hey, now wait a minute, the, what we would call the Catholic Church is doing these things, but they're not in the Bible. And so as often happens with reformations, they start kind of slowly trying to change the obvious things. But then as it went on for a few years, there were others who said, now wait a minute, you've kind of just changed the most obvious things. You haven't changed everything to make it in line with the Bible. And so there was a group who said, look at baptism. Just as I've explained, they looked at the New Testament and said, there's no infant baptism in the New Testament there's no sprinkling in the New Testament. So this group of believers then decided they were going to rebaptize themselves, their children, so that they would be more biblical in its meaning. And when they did that, they were named uh, Anabaptists or rebaptizers, and also they were persecuted. Some of them killed because they refused to baptize their infants. And we as Baptists are their ancestors. And so for these two reasons, since we are a Baptist church, we believe it to be biblical and also because of our history. I think it's the right thing to do because it's biblical, but I also feel like if we're a Baptist church and people are joining a Baptist church, we should recognize our history and give honor to that history because we've had our brothers and sisters before us give their lives for this belief that they stood for. And so that's why Baptist churches historically require people who are to be members to be baptized by immersion after they're saved. So that's the explanation, but I could also understand someone saying, well, I understand what you're saying, Pastor, but still, my first baptism was meaningful, it was valid, and I'm not getting rebaptized." And I would say, God bless you, I understand what you're saying. And so we'd have to agree to disagree, right? <laughs> okay, so we have our convictions and we stand with them and I understand them. Uh, but also that person wouldn't be able to formally join our church. That's a bad thing in a sense because I've told you all the reasons why I think you should join. But also it's not a terrible thing either. Because I've already said, you can worship, you can serve, you're part of the family. You're not an outcast, you're not a second class <coughs> citizen if you're not an official member of the church. So... How do I become a member? 
It's very simple here at Olive Branch Baptist Church. There's three ways. Maybe you've seen it, all three ways here at church. As I've just explained about baptism, some people want to join the church, but they've never been baptized, or they're being rebaptized. And so if you've noticed, when people have been baptized, they often join the church the same day. So that's called being baptized, uh, joining by baptism. So you're saved, and then you're baptized, and then you join the church. The other way is by letter. This, again, is a historical Baptist uh, principle. If you've been saved and been baptized and you join a church, then you come to another one. We've never asked people to get rebaptized again, okay, because they're coming to another church. So the church they were at sends a letter saying this person was a member of ABC Baptist Church, and now they're requesting to be a member of XYZ Baptist Church. And that's being a member by letter. And the most common way is by statement. And by statement simply means that you are making a statement. And your statement is this, that I am saved, and I have been baptized by immersion after my salvation. And I want to join the church. So that, that's the statement that you're making. And so when you're baptized by statement, you are making this proclamation, and we as a church are affirming that, and that's how you join. So you've also seen it here at Olive Branch in any worship service we have. If you come at the end of the service to me and say, I want to join the church, I will ask you, which way are you joining the church? <laughs> by baptism, by letter, or by statement? And then you've also heard me introduce people to you, and I say, Here's so-and-so, and they are joining by statement. And then we welcome them into membership. And that is how it is here at Olive Branch Baptist Church. So, some of you may be saying, why spend so much time, Pastor, on talking about this? And the answer is because for many it's confusing. Because of what I said about our culture. I've had people say to me, what do you mean join the church? I'm already a member of the church. And in their mind, they're a member of the church because they attend the church. And they don't understand what we as Baptists have historically done by asking people to officially and formally join a church. So that's why I explain it. And also, there are people that have come to church for years and don't join. And I know some of the reasons why, and a lot of it has to do with the baptism issue. But I also do wonder why sometimes people attend and serve and worship, and they're part of the family and sometimes for years, but they never join. They always have a reason, of course. But if you don't have a good reason, <laughs> I want to encourage you to join today because sometimes the reason maybe is not so good, but maybe other times it is. So, in fact, what we're going to do is close our service as we normally do with a song, a time of invitation. But our invitation is a little bit different this Sunday because I'm encouraging you, if you are not a member, to officially join Olive Branch Baptist Church. And if you, today's not the day, today's not the right time, at least now you know where we stand as a church and how you do it so that you can pray about that for the future. So this time I'm going to pray and our, we're going to uh, close our service with a song. Father, I thank you that you bring us together. I'm thankful, Lord, that you give us a purpose as you gather us together to worship you, to learn your word to care for one another, to go out into the world and tell others the gospel. I'm thankful, Lord, that Olive Branch for 144 years has gathered and has fulfilled those purposes. I thank you, Lord, for the many hundreds and thousands of members who have been a part of Olive Branch Baptist Church over these 144 years. I'm thankful, Lord, for everyone today who calls Olive Branch home. Lord, I know some of them have officially joined and others have not officially. Lord, both I'm thankful for and both groups, Lord, uh, fulfill the purpose of this church. And both, Lord, I'm thankful for and pray your blessing upon. I also pray, Lord, for those who haven't officially joined, that maybe today, Lord, would be the day. Or now they have the information that they can take with them and pray about. For Lord, I do pray that you would have many officially join the church so that we can care for one another better and support each other better and serve you better. More than that, Lord, I pray in this time of invitation that we would examine our lives and, Lord, whatever you have called us to do. Lord, we have said a lot of truth this morning. We have sang a lot of truth. 
Holy Spirit, I know you've been working in our hearts and our minds from the moment we walked in this sanctuary. So, Lord, whether it was a song we sang that spoke to us, or the psalm that Moses sang to us, or the verses that we have looked at now, Lord, in whatever way you have spoken to us, I pray now we would say yes to you. Lord, I pray these things in your name. Amen. Please stand with me. We'll sing a song as we close, but also, I'll be here. If you have any need, I'll pray with you. If you'd like to join the church today, I'll be with you to do that. So let's pray, let's respond, and let's sing.
Y'all may have a seat, because I want to introduce you, Daniel and Nikki Thrasher. Come on up. You saw Daniel get baptized a couple of Sundays ago, and Nikki, his wife, has been attending. She does work some Sundays, so that's why you don't see her every Sunday, but uh, she, they have been attending since the beginning of the summer, I think, or maybe even a little bit sooner. But I am so glad that I had the privilege of baptizing Daniel, and Nikki's been baptized before, and a member of a Baptist church in the past. And so they come today to join Olive Branch Baptist Church by statement of their faith in Jesus Christ and their uh, commitment to Christ by being baptized by immersion. So they come today, and as, as our tradition, for those who are in favor of them joining the church, I want to hear a hallelujah. Amen. I heard a lot of hallelujahs there. So, Daniel and Nikki, thank you for being here this morning and joining Olive Branch Baptist Church officially. You've heard me explain everything that it means, so I don't have to say anything else this morning. So they're going to stay here so that you can, when we're dismissed, can come and welcome them and say hi to them and maybe briefly get to know them a little bit better. And Pastor Brady is going to come and close our service in a prayer. And so, Pastor Brady, please pray for us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for the privilege that we get to be your church, that you, uh, 2,000 years ago, you did not create a, just a, a club or a crew or, or just a committee, but you created the church that we get to be a part of for your glory and for the benefit of each other. So I thank you that we get uh, to be a part of the body of Christ, and, and I pray that you bless us as we leave here today. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. <laughs> 